What's the one word that'll help advance your photography more than any other? Stay tuned, let's talk about it. Welcome to another video in my messy office. So today I wanted to talk about what's the one word or the one thing that'll help you advance in your photography more than any other. I've watched a lot of YouTube videos on photography and I would bet if you took a poll, most of them would say composition. Some would say lighting. Some might even say white balance, subject. There's a variety of different things people could say. One thing that I've never heard anyone say, which would be my choice, would be experiment. And some would say, well, that means experience. Not necessarily, because you can't have experience until you experiment. For those of you that have watched some of my other videos, you'll know that I started photography years ago shooting black and white film in a dark room. And one of the first things I had to experiment with was how long do I develop my negatives? Now I know Kodak had a suggested time of whatever it was, six and a half minutes, I think. But for whatever reason, I ended up developing mine at a little over seven minutes. Maybe I liked my negatives a little bit more dense than what Kodak recommended. I don't know why, but I always ended up liking them at 715, 730, whatever it was. Then I had to experiment with different developers, different papers, until I finally came up with what I really liked. But all that came with experimenting, and then I learned through experience. Later on, I learned how to do platinum printing. And there was a lot of experimenting when it came to that. Now, I had a friend who taught me how to do it, but I didn't really like exactly the way he presented his prints compared to mine. His personal preference, he had beautiful platinum prints. It's just that usually when you're pl printing in platinum, it's platinum and palladium. And he would add more platinum than palladium. Palladium would add a little bit richer blacks to it. And he liked the more rosy red color that a platinum or more drops of platinum would give you. I preferred richer blacks. And so I had to learn from him, but then experiment with the way I wanted it. There's plenty of ways to experiment to advance your photography. One would be finding out what lenses you prefer, right? I mean, if you ask different portrait photographers, what's their favorite portrait lens? Again, if you polled everybody, I'm going to guess 85 millimeter would be the top choice. However, there'd be plenty who would pick 105, 200, 300, maybe 50. So everyone has their own personal preference. I'm not saying they're right or wrong or I'm right. Just saying that through my experimenting, I've discovered which lens I prefer for the most part to shoot portraits. Occasionally I'll shoot a portrait of 300 millimeter or 200 millimeter and it'll look nice. But if someone said to me, what's the one lens you could do to shoot portraits? If you could only have one lens, what would it be? For me, it would be an 85 millimeter lens. Yesterday I was out in the Everglades with my infrared camera and it was an overcast day, had a lot of big clouds in it. And one of the reasons why I went out there was because I'm trying to experiment because I'm relatively new to infrared. I'm trying to experiment with what colors can I get with my converted camera. Now I don't have a full spectrum camera, so keep that in mind when I say these things. I have a 7200 converted camera. So maybe slightly different if you have a full spectrum camera. But 
I'm trying to experiment with what colors or non-colors, as some might say in infrared, can I get on overcast days and do I like it as opposed to a blue sky day? And through my experience now of experimenting, I'm finding that I really don't like overcast days. Doesn't mean you can't get a good image out of it, but it's not what I'm looking for. You know, I'm trying to get more high contrast black and white or maybe a little bit of blue or a little bit of pink reddish color in there, more of a muted color. And I can't get that in the sky when it's overcast. There's just too much gray. If I keep experimenting and processing in Photoshop, maybe I could figure it out. But I'm finding that I don't think I'm going to like it as much as I do on a, on a clear day. Now I'm going to put up an image now, which does have a little bit of cloud in it. It's a wispy cloud but it was shot mostly on a clear sky and it was also shot early in the morning, relatively early, nine o'clock, as opposed to when I went out yesterday, which was three o'clock in the afternoon, the sun's a lot higher in the sky and a lot brighter. Even though it was diffused light with all the clouds, you're still gonna get different light than you will obviously earlier in the morning. And so I'm experimenting to find out what times of day, what subjects, all those kind of things that I'm going to like in my infrared images. I'm going to also do a, another video on when I was out there yesterday and also I went to the beach and tried to shoot, tried to photograph seascapes on a cloudy afternoon. And I wasn't thrilled with, with those images either. Maybe I'll pop one up, maybe I won't here, but I wasn't real thrilled with them, so I'd never try to offer one for sale or really show people other than through an educational thing like this. Um, maybe somebody else would like it. I didn't. So I'm learning through experimenting that I kind of know now when I'd go out with my infrared camera and when I wouldn't. I experiment. I buy and sell lenses all the time. I go through different lenses to try and get to what lenses will I really use the most and for what reason? You know, I, I don't want to be a hoarder and have 25 different lenses. I'd really like to get down to between three and five lenses and just keep those and be happy with them. But I won't know until I keep experimenting with those lenses to find their strengths and weaknesses and what I really need and what I don't need for what I like to photograph. Years ago, I shot a lot more sports than what I do now. I would have used completely different lenses than what I use now for mostly landscapes, portraits, photographs of my family and my grandkids. But I will occasionally shoot sports, if you can call it that, of kids' soccer games. Yes, it's a sport, so. But I don't need a $3,000 lens to do it because no one's going to see those images except a few people on Facebook and my family, right? So I'm no longer working for Max Preps. I'm no longer getting paid for those images. So I need a far less demanding lens. Anyway, I'm kind of off topic a little bit, rambling, as I usually do. However, the point is that through experimenting in many different ways, times of day, different equipment, different papers you're going to use to print, different camera bodies that have strengths and weaknesses. You have to experiment with all these things to find what really gets you what you like to develop your style. And for, for my money, you can't develop your own style until you've, ex until you've experimented and gained some experience. So if you just get on YouTube and watch the latest video and they say, oh yeah, you got to go out and get the XYZ camera and, and put it with 
XYZ lens, and boy, that's going to give you the best sharpness. Okay, whatever. That doesn't mean it suits you, right? You're not going to know until you experiment yourself. And if that means going through a couple of different camera bodies over time, and that means buying and selling a few lenses until you really get down to what you really like, if you want to advance in photography, that's what it's going to take. If you just want to have, be a, a you know, a camera to go and take on a, a vacation and you, you make a hundred images a year off that camera and that's it. And you may never put one on the wall. Well, then you don't need to experiment a whole lot. But if you really want to advance and you want to learn to be a good photographer, and really get better at your craft, you have to experiment. That's one of the reasons why I like watching Thomas Heaton's videos, because he's always coming up with a new camera. He's shooting film, he's shooting digital, he's shooting a 100 megapixel, he's shooting a 12 megapixel camera. He's always going through things. But I don't know whether he realizes he's experimenting. I guess he does. But that's how he's learning, okay? And that's how you're going to learn. And you're going to make mistakes with buying a lens and you're going to have it for two weeks and go, ah, eh, that just doesn't suit me. Okay, but then you'll know. I mean, I've gone through a couple of different 105 millimeter lenses and every time I think, okay, I, I, I really need that format and I go and I get it and then I use it three, four times and eh, off to eBay or wherever I sell the lens, off it goes. My word of the day, as they say, is experiment. Try different things. Shoot different subjects. Shoot in black and white. Shoot in color. Through my experimenting and my experiences with making contact prints in platinum, in a lot of my portraits now, I prefer a tinge of platinum on top of it. So in Photoshop, I'll put a gradient map on almost all my black and white portraits now. And they'll be anywhere from a 3% as high as 100% um, platinum gradient map over top of it. Normally it's about 15%, 10 to 15% in there. It's just a little hint of it, but it's there. But that sets my style it sets my portraits apart from other people. I don't know how many people even notice it. I notice it. I think there's a huge difference, even with a 10 or 15% gradient map over top of it. I think there's a big difference. But most people, because they don't have anything to compare it to. You know, I'm looking at both on the screen. But I had to experiment in Photoshop to figure out if I liked it or not. And I did. And so now I do that. It's part of my style. So the bottom line is you can't develop your own style until you experiment, at least in my opinion. You can leave a comment and tell me that I'm full of crap and that's fine. But to me, unless you really experiment in many different ways, you can't advance and you can't develop your own style. Anyway, you can agree, disagree, like, subscribe. I hope you do. hope you at least click the little button and like and subscribe because I'm going to ramble on about these different topics from time to time. And I hope to see you here. All right. Until then, thanks for watching. Take good care of yourself and take your camera out and do something different with it today. Go experiment. See you.